So my name is Chris Dankaitis. I started in this industry in the mid-90s. I'm dating myself on purpose as it's relevant to the talk I'm giving. Started in the ISP industry in Canada, moved into, uh, into web hosting, into the financial industry, into web 2.0, uh, right when it was transitioning into what our current generation of social media is. Uh, and now I am at a uh, full stack consulting company that offers both professional and managed services for the last 10 years. So let me take a moment to set the stage. I want to uh, give a bit of an idea as to why we're having the talk we're having today and uh, why it's important. So in the last while we've seen an un paralleled job market shift. What was always a very competitive market is turned fierce, and the cost to acquire and retain talent has increased, meaning that it's taking longer and longer to get people, find them, and start new talent in the role. Um, so increased working from home that happened because of the pandemic was uh, blessing for some companies and an abundance of choice for people in the industry looking for new roles. But for some companies that did the uh, work from home thing before the pandemic, like the one that I'm working for, it actually uh, has eroded what was once a real uh, differentiator. So we had this great advantage with our company where people got to work from home wherever they were in the world, and now that is Maybe not the normal, but that is now more acceptable and more available to people. So we're SRE, we love our data, and so what did we do with all of that? Well, we took a look, of course, first at our hiring practice. We looked at where we were hiring and how we were hiring, and we are already, a, you know, as I said, the, the DNA of my company is that it's already a work-from-home company, so we already hire around the world. So we have a lot of access to talent in different countries. Uh, we're in over 40 countries, uh, a mix between offices and professional service agreements with our employees. And so that looked good. So the how we are hiring, we have a really well-established hiring process. I've actually done talks about how we refactored our pro hiring process at SRECon in the past. Uh, and we're still very happy with it. But what we did find is that the process was a bit slow. And, with, and today, with the current market, we were finding that we were having some challenges getting to the end of our process with candidates because they were entertaining multiple offers at the same time. And while that's always been true in the past, in the current market, that was even more so true. And so we looked at opportunities to tighten up the process, see where we could kind of short circuit it, put things in parallel, and really tighten that up. And we did, and it did show some improvement. Uh, but what about the who? So we reviewed our processes, we tweaked them out for efficiency, but what it did is it actually gave us an idea of a fundamental truth about how we hire and who we hire. And I don't think this is specific to my company. I think that a lot of companies go to, go to this kind of paradigm, and that's you always want to try and find and hire the strongest and most senior person you could. So we basically constructed a false narrative at our company where the work we were doing was so complicated, so, um, you know, hard that only the most senior person could do it. And we couldn't conceive of how we could possibly bring in uh, less seasoned resources to do what we do, quote unquote. And of course, we, the, the spoiler alert here is we were so wrong on that. Uh, we were very much playing into that narrative that we've heard over the last few days of, you know, the fetishizing of the importance of what we do in our role. So in short, we were closing ourselves off from a significant portion of the talent pool because we were really only trying to hire senior individuals. So what did we do about it? Well, 
we decided that one of the things we wanted to do was to uh, put in a more robust career progression framework uh, and then start an emerging talent program for new graduates. So it sounds pretty simple, right? But as with most simple uh, solutions, it becomes incredibly complicated once you start going underneath the hood. So why? Why do a new grad program? Well, this is really interesting because there's kind of two different ways to look at this. There is kind of the emotional side of things, which I'll start with, and then there is the business side of things. So we should do a new grad program because we stand upon the shoulders of giants. They don't really teach what we do in schools. They didn't, you know, 30 years ago when I was in school, and they still don't now. Uh, and I'm not even quite sure about the why of that. Um, but it is kind of still true. Um, they do teach a lot of good skills that you can translate into the work that we do in school, but they don't teach anybody that kind of horizontal glue, uh, to coin the phrase from yesterday as well, which is the bread and butter of a lot of the work that we do. And many of us, I'd say most of us, are all here because at some point earlier on in our career, we had a mentor or multiple mentors who took the time to help us learn the craft and to grow. Um, and therefore, it becomes our responsibility to kind of bring in that next generation of SRE and DevOps people. I believe that the bar of entry into DevOps and SRE is higher for new grads than in other areas because you'll look at a job description and there's going to be a whole lot of things on that job description that you've never heard of before and that you didn't learn in school. So, you know, humans will naturally gravitate to the path of least resistance if you're going to see a job description that matches well with your education, whether it's in software engineering or whether it's in machine learning, you'll move towards that area instead of necessarily taking a shot at the, uh, the job that half of the resume or half of the job description, you don't understand what the technology is asking for. Right now, there are a lot of other people who are doing the SRE and DevOps work because there aren't enough of us to go around. Uh, the challenge there is that a lot of the times they're not passionate about the work. Uh, they look at it as a hassle and they look at it as something to overcome as fast as they can so they can get back to their primary task. And that causes a lot of challenges around quality, security, reliability, not just to name a few things. So by mentoring the next generation, we can help them to avoid some of the mistakes of, the, of our past, and we can instill great habits and uh, standards right from the start. And at the end of the day, it's really important as I get to the second half of my career to think about the, why I'm here and the people who mentored me along the way. And I get that sense of wanting to give back. But hold on. We're running a business. Or, you know, each company we're working for is running a business. And, you know, while they'll empathize with those reasons, they're going to want to know, like, why we should start a new program more so, what's in it for the company. So for us, it unlocks a bigger talent pool. As I mentioned, we were always looking for more senior people. We had that, you know, hero syndrome in our head that we couldn't have anybody with, you know, less than five or eight years of experience to do the work we were doing. Uh, so it opens up a large new market for us. Um, we would have a healthy pipeline of new people coming in each year. So our grad program is designed so that we have a new cohort, cohort start every May, which is at, just after people graduate in, uh, in Canada, where I'm from. And because of having a, uh, having a new career progression framework, we would have a lot of opportunity for them to stay within the company and grow and become senior resources. You know, I'll talk about the elephant in the room. They are cost effective. You do not pay new grads the same as you would pay someone with 10 to 20 years in, of experience in the industry. But that was not the primary motivating factor for the new grad program, though it is always something that the finance people like to hear. Um, 
and that allowed us to build a good relationship with local community colleges and universities uh, and the people who are in those uh, positions so they could help us find amazing new grads for our program. It provides coaching and mentoring opportunities for our existing intermediate and senior resources, which is incredibly important skill that they should be learning inside of their own career advancement path. And, you know, just to reiterate it, it allows us to be good corporate and community citizens. So I got the green light. I got the green light from the company to start a new grad program. So the initial program framework, we'd never done this before. Um, so we had to make a few wagers and bets at the beginning while we were designing the program. So I'll go over a few notes in those wagers and bets. So this program is not to bring on interns or co-op students. It's designed for people who have graduated within their first year or two. Uh, and we made a bit of an exception uh, because of the pandemic. We realized that, you know, some of these people who had been affected by the pandemic, who had graduated in, you know, 2019, 2020, they may have not had the opportunity to work in our field yet because that was not necessarily the best time to get your very first job. Uh, and we did talk to a few people who had been working in, you know, at a gas station with a computer science degree because they had just been waiting for things to kind of open back up so that they could get a job in the industry. Our first wager is that we were going to mostly be dealing with people who had almost zero SRE or DevOps knowledge or experience. And we surmised that by tailoring a program and mentoring people uh, hands-on, we could take someone with zero knowledge to the level of a junior engineer in two years. So we designed our program to be a two-year program uh, with a graduation at the end into a junior engineering role. So the first thing that has to happen when you want to hire people, of course, is you have to write a job description. And so we had this two-year roadmap to take someone from zero to a junior engineer. The big problem is, is that our career progression framework at, this, at that point in the company looked like this. We didn't have the concept of a junior engineer. We didn't have the concept of an intermediate or senior engineer, nor did we have that same concept applied to our architect level. Uh, so the first thing we had to do was figure out what a junior or engineer one would be in our company, and then we could work backwards to design the new grad program. And then doing that also meant that, that we could then move forward and create a career progression framework for all of the people in DevOps in our company who would then benefit from that uh, added uh, opportunity to advance their career outside of these three very large umbrella and vague areas. So after the new grad program, or as a result of the new grad program, that's what our career progression framework now looks like. And you, we can, you can see if you're starting off as a new grad, which are the two specialist titles, uh, we, we really debated those, and I'm not adverse to changing them, but I don't know how to have a, a title for them that kind of encapsulates what they are without co-opting another title that doesn't mean what they're doing. Um, but you can see if you're starting off in the new grad program, you have a very large career progression framework. The other thing we did is we split off the engineering framework from the architecture framework to show that it's not, it, they're different roles and they're not necessarily a linear progression. You don't just move up to being an architect because you've been a senior engineer for a long time. Uh, it has to be a career advancement goal. It, you have to gain the skills that you need to be an architect in order to jump to that track. So we had some assumptions, and we were right about most, some of them, and wrong about others, which is generally how that works. Uh, we were right. <laughs> the vast majority of people we talked to had no idea or knowledge about what SRE and DevOps was. They had maybe heard about it. There was a they, we got a lot of feedback. Oh yeah, we had a paragraph in a textbook about what it was, 
or maybe they used a couple of basic DevOps or SRE tools for one or two of their assignments where maybe they deployed a little bit of code with CI, CD into AWS or something very basic like that. But by and large, we did not have people who had, uh, who had any pre-existing knowledge. We thought it was going to be difficult to find people. We were wrong. We had an abundance, and we had a lot of feedback that our program was unique, and I don't believe that I agree with the word unique, but I think it, I would say that it was rare because they were bringing the feedback in that there's not a lot of new grad programs that revolve around DevOps or SRE. The other thing we quickly realized, and this should be one of those kind of really straightforward things, but it was something that we had to realize was that we were dealing with people that were going through, in some cases, some of their very first interviews. And we really quickly realized that we had, uh, we had a commitment to make to go above and beyond to ensure that we were giving them a positive experience, especially for the people we interviewed that we were not going to be bringing on to the new grad program. Uh, we really quickly realized that the people we were talking to had only limited experience with interviewing. They had very, uh, they had very little knowledge of what they were interviewing for from a day-to-day -day point of view, and we wanted to make sure that they left with a very positive experience, even if they weren't getting the role. So, sorry. So what we learned from the hiring process is that we do have a good process, but it makes a lot of assumptions. It makes a lot of assumptions around the fact that we were, we were interviewing people who had had this job in the past, and therefore we were able to just assume things. Uh, the reality, of course, is we shouldn't have made those assumptions, but we were because we were hiring people who have come from DevOps organizations or SRE organizations. And, uh, you know, our, our process took that into consideration. Our technical evaluation was essentially useless because uh, most of the people we were interviewing, the vast majority of their experience was with MATLAB and running, you know, modeling data or doing some software engineering. It had nothing to do with the day-to-day the -day tooling and work that we do. So we, were, we retooled our interviewing process to not concern ourselves with round technical evaluation. Uh, and if, again, you have happened to hear my other talk around retooling our hiring process, that ended up being okay because the number one thing we hire for isn't a technical attribute because of how quickly those change. The number one thing we hire for is a growth mindset, uh, the eagerness to learn new things, and that critical thinking that came in spades with our new grads. So that's how we ended up with an abundance of choice uh, for the role, because we just really understood right at the beginning that we were going to have to start teaching right from scratch. And so when we didn't worry about the fact that they didn't know Terraform and TerraTest and Argo and Kubernetes, so when we forgot about that and we just looked at the people and their eagerness and their willingness to learn, and we, ass and we assessed them on those uh, merits, then we really started seeing that we had a lot of choice. So if you build it, that's the old saying. Uh, so we hired two amazing new grads, and as you do, you have a few months before they start. We hired them uh, just around the end of, of uh, March, so they still had a few months before they ended school. So we actually had to design this, pro get this program out of our heads and into a state where it would be ready for them when they showed up. Uh, and that ended up being a lot of work, as you can imagine. So we all put on our construction hats and boots and decided that we had to build out this, this new program for our grads, this new roadmap for them and turn it into a reality. And everyone agreed on our team and in our company that we wanted it to be representative of like the best that we could be, not necessarily what we were doing. It, it was really 
Uh, great to hear earlier on about the SRE book that you know, uh, uh, a lot of that book or parts of that book were aspirational. So we were following the same line that, you know, we needed to, we wanted, we wanted to aspire to show our new grads the right way of doing things, the best practices, all of that good stuff. So the new grad program in our mind looked like this. It essentially started with onboarding as one does, foundational training, uh, now this is this looks linear, but the reality is it's a little it is more parallel. We would have technical and non-technical mentoring. We would have them start learning on what we have as internal projects, and I'll, I'll talk about internal projects later because with the way my company works, that may not be uh, mean the same thing to you. Uh, and then we wanted to take them because coming to conferences and coming and speaking at conferences is a large part of the DNA of my company. We wanted to take them to a small conference in their first year, like a AWS summit or a DevOps days or something like that. In year two, uh, they would continue. Year one was more around broadening knowledge, and then year two is more around deepening it, you know, the standard T that we talk about as far as our progression goes. Uh, they would also be assisting in bringing the new co cohort on um, and helping them get acclimated. They would continue with their mentoring, continuing with their training, uh, but then they would also start getting exposed to our client-facing projects. So again, that's a little bit specific to my company, but uh, you know that's how it would end up working. And then, like I mentioned, at the end of that, two-year cycle, they would, ha they would graduate into a, dev a junior DevOps engineer role. So onboarding is important. I know there was some talk about it yesterday, and I completely agree. Uh, our onboarding process also had a lot of assumptions. It assumed that they, we were also onboarding people who had worked for companies before, not coming straight out of uh, education system. So we quickly realized that we had to retool our onboarding process to help the new grads actually learn things that we just took for granted because when we're hiring people, we're hiring people who've, you know, worked for five, seven, ten plus years. So, you know, we use Google Workspace, so we had to literally go through the fundamentals of that, uh, kind of calendar and meeting etiquette, uh, working from the office, working from home, uh, meeting etiquette, uh, time, uh, Time tracking, which as we're a consultancy, so we have to track our time, so that's relevant to them, so we had to go over that with them. And a greater focus on the fundamentals of our tools without the assumption that they've used them in the past. So, you know, we use Jira, Confluence, Slack, etc. Foundational training was pretty straightforward and pretty easy. I've, as I've mentioned in my previous talks around hiring, we're really good at understanding what technology is and what we need to know. Uh, these images are some of the technologies we work with, but not all of them by any stretch of the imagination. And we were very easily, uh, quickly able to come up with a technology roadmap. But then we realized that DevOps and SRE is much more than just working with technology. You can work with technology that's modern and not be doing DevOps or SRE. So we had to come up with more of almost like a cultural onboarding. So we, had, we ended up developing uh, onboarding modules around the la larger concepts and philosophies of DevOps and SRE, the history of DevOps and SRE, both in the industry and how it evolved in our company. And we learned after developing those, we, we developed them with the new grad focus, but we learned that they would be valuable for everybody coming on to the team for alignment. So technical and non-technical coaching was pretty straightforward as well. We had some uh, senior resources who were incredibly eager to be paired up with our new grads and help technically mentor with them. They, they set aside blocks in their calendars to pair program with them to talk about what work they're working on, to look at the work they're working on, etc. So we started moving in the right direction. Uh, so again, working on internal projects. So uh, we have the concept of client-facing projects and internal projects at my company. Uh, since we are consultants, client projects are projects we are working on for a client. Uh, and internal projects are things like reference architecture, code accelerators, uh, you know, different 
pieces of glue that we can reuse uh, to help us work smarter. Um, as with a lot of companies, those get pushed to the side in favor of the, of the client work. And uh, we had been having some challenges around getting velocity on those projects. So we were able to carve them out and get the new grads working on them. And it gave them a chance to learn how to work in a project environment that had less, uh, less challenges around stakeholders and deadlines and all that good stuff. Uh, it also allowed us to uh, run those projects properly. We've, we had identified at that point that we were not really, uh, we were talking the talk, but we weren't really walking the walk. So we wanted to start actually doing what we have always said we were doing. So this gave us the opportunity to kind of uh, decide how we wanted to deliver our work, to set out standards for our team, for our for the way we do things, and uh, you know, and it really allowed us to make a lot of decisions because we wanted to teach our new grads how to do things properly out of the box. Uh, and for the record, it was one of those situations where we, you know, we we knew this all before the new grads, but we had never gotten to that point where we had decided to fix it. So you know, cue your montage. We're now doing all the things and everything is working great. So we had to put the house in order. So like I said, this gave us an opportunity to lay out things like coding standards, uh, GitOps workflows, deployment standards, communication standards, ticketing system set up, you know, like, hey, we always wanted to integrate, you know, our check-ins into our ticketing system so it would automatically put a comment in. So we, you know, we'd do stuff like that. Documentation standards. Uh, and it also started to answer the question as to why we thought only the most senior people could do the work we were doing. And it wasn't because that was the truth, it was because we had not actually done any of the actual hard work of setting ourselves up in the first place. And I just want to make it clear, this is still a work in process. It takes a long time to accumulate technical debt and it takes a long time to get rid of technical debt. So we're by no means done this. this is, we, we're still well into this process and we're still moving through this process of implementing the changes that we want. And the whole idea is that we've started this on our internal projects but we're now gonna move that out into our client facing projects as well. So here's the lessons learned so far. We dramatically underestimated the eagerness and the speed at which the new grads learned. They are coming out of university mode, they're in learning mode, and we found that they consumed information and consumed concepts and technology a lot faster than we had anticipated. Uh, we wanted them to be in the office because we had this idea that, you know, it's your first job, you should be in the office, you need that structure and discipline. Uh, and, you know, the pandemic didn't really help us out in that regard. So our offices are open now, but they're, we're, we're using them more as a meeting and gathering place than a daily workplace. So uh, they're, they're working mostly remote and they can come into the office in a hybrid fashion when they want to come in to collaborate together. So that's something we're going to look at for the next cohort about whether or not that's actually something we need to worry about. Um, and yes, we have to spend some extra time helping and setting them up, but it makes us show our own work, which is very important. A lot of times, you know, it's not, you get one point for the answer. My old math teacher would say, you get one point for the answer, but you get the rest of the points for showing your work. Uh, and having the new grads really forces us to show the work and it really helps us learn where we can improve. So we're doing a lot more code review, pair programming, test-driven development, and in general, doing all of the stuff that we always said we were doing. So this is a ma major improvement on the team. Everybody is happy there. Um, we now have proper sandbox and test environments, which is a, a big win because of the new grads. So we, uh, have, we work in ver various clouds, and now we have cloud sandbox environments that the team can use instead of letting the new grads out into the wild. Uh, but it benefits the whole team as well because we can prototype things and test things uh, in a sandbox environment that we don't have to worry about if something goes awry. Uh, and, you know, the bad habits, the lack of processes and the lack of documentation 
and the technical debt is slowly going away. As I said, it's still a work in progress, but and it's going to take more. It takes more than a few months to clean up, but it, it's making its way out there because when you have to explain it to the to your new grads, then you may as well just get the document done. So we're going to do the call to action. This isn't a big company problem. And this isn't something just for the big companies. You know, this isn't just, oh yeah, the, the Googles and the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's, they have a new grad program. I think almost any company can benefit from this and almost any company can do this. Um, we have to ensure that as, an, as a group, we all enshrine the idea that learning how to coach and mentor is a very important skill to develop within all of us and not just managers. And you and your team are going to learn as much from the new grads, if not more, than they learn from you. We need more well-trained DevOps and SRE people out there. And through mentoring, we will be able to drive the standards and quality. And more people doing SRE and DevOps does not equal less opportunity for us. So I'm going to leave you with the following. My challenge to you is commit your company team or self to mentoring one to two brand new people a year. And then we will have a very robust future of SRE. Thank you.